Hello and welcome to the fifth week event. I am your host, Landon Porter, also known as Vol. Hey, and now you know how that's pronounced. This is episode zero of the fifth week event, and the reason it's zero is because this is kind of an experiment. This is the first time I'm doing this, and it's the first time with the new equipment. I recently bought a new laptop. Thank you very much to everyone that bought my books and made that possible. And I'm trying to see if it can work. Because this is an experiment, you'll have to forgive a few things like a lack of opening music and things like that. I'll have those in the future, hopefully, if I keep doing this. But for now, it's really just going to be me talking. And I'm going to try to be entertaining with it, but I've watched... I've You can't watch other podcasts, but I've listened to other podcasts, and I know the more slickly produced ones have a little bit more than just someone talking. Anyway, let's get started. And the first place I want to start is with, well, the name of the show. The Fifth Week Event. The Fifth Week Event is, for those of you who don't know comics, and the more I do this, the more I learn that a lot of my fans, despite being superhero fans, are not comics fans. So, the Fifth Week Event is... Well, let me put it this way. When comic book companies put out their books, they usually put them out on the same day every week. For the mainstream, that's Wednesdays. Now, they also put out the same book on the same Wednesday each week, which means if, say, Superman comes out on the first Wednesday, it will always come out on the first Wednesday each week. That goes fine, except for the fact that at least once a year and sometimes more, you'll have five Wednesdays in a month. The fifth Wednesday is then the odd man out, and they don't have any regular comics to put out there. So they'll, most of the time, they'll just do a bunch of one-shots or special comics or annual issues and things like that for the fifth Wednesday. But then they'll do weird stuff. They'll do special events. Events that usually have no bearing whatsoever in, in the story. And if you've been following the serial, I sort of do that too. When the Lidecker Institute stories always come out on the third Wednesday these days. Uh, Runebreaker always comes out on the first Wednesday. I've sort of put a hiatus on the fourth Wednesday things because I need to catch up on things. But... I usually do something special on Fifth Wednesdays. It's always like a one-shot story or a bit of short fiction from another universe that I'm trying out. And this month, it's this. This is the special thing this month for the Fifth Wednesday of April. And so I decided just to call it the Fifth Wednesday event. And I'll try probably try to do this at least every Fifth Wednesday Maybe more often if I get to enjoy it or it becomes popular. So there you have it. There actually haven't been that many fifth week events recently. Um, mostly because, you know, the big companies, they, they do these events now. Like the real event, not fifth week events. And they usually run over, so there's a bunch of tie-ins and crap that end up in the fifth week. Um... The, the most recent one that I can remember that was really a big deal was Flashpoint's ending. You know, what it led to the big DC reboot that, you know, really tricked me for a while there in thinking they were going to do some good stuff, mostly because I missed things like Red Hood and the Outlaws. But, um, yeah, now you know some interesting trivia about comic books. Probably a bygone era now. We're not really going to probably see, like, the fun fifth week events, like what had led into Young Justice. Not for a while. I think that we're back in this cycle of going back into 90s crap. You know, at least at DC. Marvel, I I haven't looked at their latest event. I didn't really like the whole, um... Oh, I can't remember. Oh, the original Sin story arc. I, I kind of liked that they bought in some actual villains, like old school villains, but... It really wasn't an interesting event to me. Like, oh, everybody has some dark secrets that you never heard of. You know, a.k.a. we've made a bunch of retcons for no reason. I haven't heard anything about the new one that they have, the Battle World. 
Um, the only thing I heard about, about that really was that they were, what was it, Axel Alonso said, oh, everything's being smushed together like stacking a bunch of pizzas on top of each other. Which, you know, when you have to come up with an analogy that stupid, that certainly makes me have faith in your writing ability. But no, this isn't a place to complain. Well, it's not just a place for me to complain. Oh, I'll definitely complain. You'll hear some rants. You know, you always hear some rants. But uh, not this time. This is just um, me talking about... I want to try to bring up some cool stuff in here. I, I really think more people need to hear the cooler side of superheroes and fantasy and writing in general. And, uh, it just so happens that my friends over at the Pen and Cape Society, they're doing a, well, they just did the first episode of their podcast, Throwing the Gun. And I was invited to be part of that. The problem is that I have really crappy internet, and I couldn't get on the Skype conversation with them. That was sad. That's part of my inspiration for doing my own thing here is that I don't have to get on Skype, so I can just do recordings on my own. But I, I like the camaraderie. I, I haven't really written anything since about it since I first joined the Pen and Cape Society, but it's really enjoyable to be part of a group of people that are doing the same sort of thing as you, but they're all bringing their own... Uh, their, their own style to it. And being able to talk to them and joke around, especially like um, like Drew Hayes and Christopher Wright, Cheyenne Young, the, who are all part of um, Jim Zawahi. I hope I didn't mispronounce his name, but they're all part of the, the podcast, and they're all cool people. I talk to them on Twitter all the time. Um, those of you f- who have followed and read the serial have heard about me being sick, so I haven't been on Twitter. I like Twitter. I miss Twitter, um, like, going on and just mouthing off to random celebrities. I have made John Rogers, and if you don't know who John Rogers is, he wrote the best parts of the the original Blue Beetle run for Jamie, Jaime Reyes. I keep calling him Jamie. Um, he also writes a show called Leverage, and I will say this to anybody, anybody that wants to be a writer... If you want to learn how to write entertaining things, not just like write technically well, but write entertaining things, you should go out, you should buy the Leverage DVDs and listen to the commentary. Because King John holds court, and he tells you how to write really awesome things. That's where I got, you know, I've, I've, um... I've given him credit for the the idea, the fact of the promise of the premise of the concept. You know, that's that's one of those things that writers really need to know because that is how you write entertaining stuff. You, when you promise something, you give something. It's the P.T. Barnum thing: give the people what they want. And a lot of people forget that they're like, "I'm going to give them what I want." Like I hear so many authors say, oh, I'll write whatever I want, and then I find my audience. Like, yeah, that's fine. You should write what you want. You should be true to yourself. But you, sh- when you make a promise to the audience, you should keep that promise to the audience. You know what I mean? Too many of them like to play tricks. They like to feel clever. I, 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 don't, th- I don't know if if you understand what I mean when they say clever, but they're like, oh, I, I pulled this bait and switch on the reader. They'll never see it coming. And my question is always, well, do they? did they want to see it coming? Like, is that what they wanted when they bought this book? Because if it's not, they're going to be pissed. Like, really unhappy. I've, you've seen me complain about stories that tried to pull that crap and... I, the people don't understand. Like the, if you read stories, you know what you like. You there's a reason why you bought that story, and it's not so the author can feel clever by pulling the rug out from under you or pulling the football away like Lucy with uh, Charlie Brown. And too many of them really, really want to be Lucy. You know what I mean? It, it's it's sad. It's. Well, it's more annoying than sad. 
because I hear about this and I'm like, oh God, I, I really hope I don't run into that sort of story. I hope that this book that I'm buying doesn't have somebody with that attitude behind it. They, they're trying to be artistic, I guess, but I, I've, I've always said there's, there's this big fight that goes on with, um, among authors, there's the artist versus the the business people. Like people are like write write for art, write write things that are beautiful, versus uh, just follow the trend and like make all your make a bunch of money off of it. And that's not my thing. My thing is about entertainment. I think I've said this a lot on the blog. I. I want to entertain people. I want people to say, hell yeah, that was awesome. That thing that I saw happen, that was awesome. Which is like the entire impetus for like um, the most recent story. I just finished it up, by the way. Bad Lass. The Ballad of Bad Lass. I love doing titles like that. I've, I've done a lot of like, boring titles recently because you had to make sure people understood it. Like Avalon Rises, Darkness Falls. It's... I I want to go back and make better titles for some of the middle works. You know, around... I, I think Rust Buckets was a really good one. But some some of them are not as clever as my earlier th- stuff, like Psalm for a Soul. I think Psalm for a Soul was one of my better ones. Um. Oh, wow, I just completely got off on a tangent. Where was I actually? Oh, oh, I was talking about being on Twitter, and I some of my proudest internet work was I actually made John Rogers, uh, the John Rogers, a guy I really look up to as a writer. I made him laugh. Um, if you've ever seen the movie The Core, he was one of the writers on The Core, and The Core was a movie that was. If you once again, if you haven't seen it, it was Earth's core stopped spinning. Because, well, I don't want to give spoilers, but Earth's core stopped spinning, and they had to send a scientific team in a giant drill boat down to restart the spinning of the core. And yes, that is completely insane, and that's why it was great. But when when the movie was first came out, um, and I heard the um. The trailers, and they're talking about oh, Earth's core stopped spinning. We have to go save Earth's core, and I, my friends, will attest to this. I would not shut up about it. I was going around all the time, going, "Earth's core has stopped spinning. Are you a bad enough dude to save Earth's core?" So it just so happened it was the tenth anniversary of the core's release, and John Rogers was complaining about the fact that no one get gets that movie. Everybody thinks it was way stupider than it actually is. And while they don't get that it was supposed to be like a pop action, you know, science heroes kind of thing, something like the pulp fifties idea. It didn't have to be scientifically correct. You didn't have to have good reasons for the Earth's core to be in danger because you were having bad dudes save the Earth's core. So he's complaining about that, and I told him that they should have used my tagline. The Earth's core stopped spinning. Are you a bad enough dude to save the Earth's core? And, you know, he immediately responds, God damn, that's good. I wish we had used that. I was like, man, the writer who I think is clever thought that I was clever. That's awesome. So that was... That was one of my big moments on Twitter. It was, it was real fun. That's why I like Twitter. You can, you can talk to anyone there. You can mouth off to anyone. If, you, if a congressman says something stupid, you can actually go, you just said something stupid, sir. And, you know, you, it's not quite an instant messaging service, but you can talk to people on there. Like I said, I talked to my fellow Pen and Kate people. And, oh, that's where I started this tangent. You know, so... It's it's really, really interesting because when I first started with the um, with the serial, the serial writers did not talk to each other. That was a really strange thing because I was coming from web comics, you know. Me and uh, uh, you know her as Pele. Me and Pele, we were doing the uh, the Ledger Man comic, and web comics, web comics people are always talking to each other. There are 
dozens of forums where you can hang out with other webcomic people. But serial writers? Uh, no, nothing. Absolutely nothing. For a little while, Alexander Aaron tried to, you know, unify us under a banner, but nothing really happened. And, you know, five years later, I get this this email from Drew Hayes going, hey, you want to join the Pen and Cape Society? So I was like, hell yeah. And it's been really good. Like, not just from a business perspective, but from a morale perspective. Being able to go, hey, you and I are from the same place. Let's talk. Let's hash out some ideas. It's been great. So, uh, yeah, that's um, my little plug, plug for them. Go to penandcapesociety.com, and you can find a lot of really awesome stuff, I promise you. So, yeah, because this is episode zero, let's end this by talking about what I can do with this, with this little, you know, podcast show that I've got now. Um, eventually my voice will cl- clear up so you won't hear this breathless delivery that I've got going right now. It's, I'm still sick. Um, besides that, um, I think I'm going to use this for, you know, more, less, you know, my articles are really in a list kind of format. With this, I think I'm going to do more freeform stuff, um, more single topic issues, like, instead of just breaking them down into, into a bunch of lists, just talk, talk directly about it. Um, other things, I think I'll tell some stories from gaming. If you recall my D&D month last year, when I was telling stories about stuff that happened in game, I have a lot of other stories that I can relate. That and in video games, you know, uh, MMORPG, stuff like that. You know, interesting things happen to me with that stuff, and, uh, it's fun to tell people about it. It's one of those awesome things about being a nerd, I think is that you can tell these stories that to a person that is not into what you're talking about, you sound completely insane. Like, I talk about Dwarf Fortress to people, and, like, how how I've had some some uh, dwarf snap because the goblins killed their their spouse, so she goes up and murders all the goblins using his arm as a weapon. And, you know, some people are like, what the hell are you talking about? But, you know, it's it's a geek thing that you can talk about weird stuff where context is for the weak. <laughs> you know, pe- I, most people that are listening to this don't play Dwarf Fortress, but they get what I'm talking about, and I think that's cool. Um, my, my adventures in uh, the, not the newest Elder Scrolls game, but the previous one, Oblivion. It's, sandbox games are great for telling stories because... You can just wander around and just do horrible stuff. Like, I, I, you have a lot of dungeons down in there that have um, multiple factions, and you can start fights between the factions. That's fun. But uh, I'll hold on for that later. If if you if you're you're really really bad, I'll, I might sing for you too. That'll teach you. <laughs> yeah, I'm actually I'm actually a pretty good singer. I'm just can't right now because I've got. I'm all growly and stuff from my, from being sick, but uh, uh, maybe maybe it'll be a treat instead of a punishment. Well, you don't know. It depends on you. And just gonna try to have fun with this. It's uh, it's a new interesting thing that's going on, and uh, I want to see what I can do with it. I've I've never uh, really tried to do the podcast kind of thing. Never really even considered it until recently, but uh, it'll be fun. It'll be a little adventure. I've, it, there was a point where I never done the blogging or anything either, and although I hate having to come up with ideas for blogs. By the way, it's Tuesday, and I still don't have an idea what to do for Friday's blog. But uh, I I come up with stuff. I I try to try to do entertaining stuff, and from the comments, I think people are getting what I'm laying down and. They like when I break stuff down. They like when I play with tropes and uh, especially monsters. People like this old monster, so I'm trying to come up with new monsters to play with. Everyone wants to see dragons. I'm like, ah, uh, that would just spoil Runebreaker. Like if you if you saw my idea of dragons before they showed up in uh the new the newest Soul Battery City of Bards, you 
it'd kind of be a spoiler, so I'm holding back on that. But there's plenty of other monsters that we can play with. You know, there's... I, I've said my piece about elves, and I've done the uh, the air version of the elf, but there's a lot of stuff that you could do with elves, I think. I probably won't do that. I, I want to do gnomes. Gnomes are kind of a terrible... Uh, D&D has gnomes, and they're kind of obnoxious. I, I, I don't know a better way to say it. They're, they're like halflings with a bunch of bells on them. <laughs> Essentially, it's like, oh, you get to be a halfling, but you get a bunch of minor illusions and you can talk to badgers. And that'd be fine if badgers were like a lot more badass, but what, are you just hanging out with woodland creatures? Come on, you're supposed to be an adventurer, jackass. So uh, I want to do new gnomes. There's no gnomes on air, but there could be, like, I could do a gnomes type thing. I don't know. People, leave comments, tell me what you want to hear, and like I said when I was talking about John Rogers and P.T. Barnum, give the people what they want. Except the dragons, because I don't want to spoil you on the dragons. You're going to have to eat your gnomes before you have your dragons. (laughs) So, yeah. This has been the fifth week event, and I hope you like it, because I I really hope to be able to do more of these at some time in the future. Um, let me know what you think, and um, understandably, there are some tech issues to han- handle. I'm, I don't know how to edit yet, so we're going to see how that turns out, but we're going we're gonna to play this by ear and uh, see what comes out. And, uh, as always, you know, if you want to hear something here, you want to see something on the blog, just let me know, and I will try to be accommodating, because that's just the kind of guy I am. So, until Friday's blog, take care, and, uh, have fun out there. Oh, and I'll also work on a sign-off. That'll be fun. <laughs>